G'day anti-socialites, this is Ryan Quarrington here. You might remember me from episode 227 and from South Australian band Shatterbrain and Alkira. I'm momentarily commandeering this episode to plug Shatterbrain's debut album, Pitchfork Justice, which is out now via Wormhole Death Records. It's available for streaming wherever you stream your music, or if you're a fan of old school physical, you can pick up a CD or a vinyl along with any other band paraphernalia you can think of via our online store at shatterbrainmetal.com. Thanks for listening, over to you Andy and Larry. G'day Andy Socialites, it's uh, Jeremy Big Jez Turner here. I'm just coming in with a quick plug for me mate Andy because he's running a fucking sweet deal over at his Patreon account at the moment. Uh, so I've been a member of it for a few months now. It's always been a pretty entertaining little listen on a Tuesday morning I think it is. Uh, he does a heap of shitty karaoke, he'll tell us a whole bunch of things about random shit that he's researched in the last week. Uh, he'll tell you a little bit about what's going on in the world of the man himself, Andy Dowling. Uh, my personal favourite part is his mission to offset his impending alcoholism with getting his steps up on his iPhone. It's just all round good fucking fun. In any case, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, of course, that dollar a month is a slap in the face here, so if you're feeling even halfway flush, you should probably go for the $5 jobby, and in return you get a whole heap of sweet extra content, and he gets to keep doing his thing, and then maybe at some point in the next fucking decade, we'll get another Lord album. And in any case, like, five bucks is pretty much nothing. If you live in Sydney, or even worse, if you live in fucking Melbourne, five bucks is somewhere between a third and half of a schooner in most pubs. So it's a pretty sweet deal, and it goes a long way to help Andy keep pumping out the good shit we all like. Anyway, thanks for listening. Enjoy the podcast. All right. Howdy, folks. Episode 251 of the Andy Social Podcast is here. It's in your ear holes. We're ready to go. Let's go. All right. Dave Slave. Who would have thought Dave Slave is on the Andy Social Podcast? Uh, he's actually been requested by quite a few people over the years, uh, especially when I started to dig into some of the old Australian metal scene, some of our legends uh, from years gone by and people that are still uh, getting out there and playing heavy metal riffs. And Dave's name has popped up a bunch of times. Well, I went out to Dave's place and we had a chat and it was a lot of fun. Now, if you're not familiar with Dave, Dave is probably best known as the bass player from Sadistic Execution, which is probably one of the most iconic extreme metal bands that this country has ever produced. Uh, and this is a band that has built a, just a, the most over the top, uh, just intense reputation. And uh, you can go online, you can look at the videos, you can look at all the, the propaganda out there about sadistic execution. And this is a band that was uh, that that received a lot of a uh, lot of recognition and uh, respect from people in other parts of the world. A lot of the Norwegian and Scandinavian black metal scene um, really enjoyed Sad X, and uh, those guys had a lot of interactions with uh, some of the iconic guys from uh, from that black metal scene, and a lot of other people from uh, the extreme metal world. These guys, uh, you know, Sad X were just iconic. So Dave, uh, since Sad X has moved on. Dave's moved on. He's got his uh, main project, Doomed and, Doomed and Disgusting. Um, he's done a whole bunch of other things along the way, um, including his, uh, I think, what do you have? His Mr. Moon Alien, Alien 500, Digital Fiction Music 3000 AD. Uh, he does his Dave Slaves bionic bass playing, ultra bass playing. He's just done a whole bunch of stuff um, over the years. Uh, he is out there. He's fun. I love this guy. Um, I've known him for, for quite a few years, ever since I moved to Sydney, and he's always been out and about and willing to have a beer and talk talk a bit of shit and uh, it was just great to catch up with him after quite quite a while i haven't seen him for for quite some time and it was just fun to have a chat everything we discuss is going to be in the show notes over at andysocial.net or andydowling.net you should be able to click through on your podcast player there'll be some stuff in the description uh search for doomed and disgusting on facebook i think it's youtube.com slash doomed and disgusting or something very similar to that i'll have some links to his, some some of his videos um he was on tv at one point a couple of times actually so i'll see if i can find some uh, youtube clips and chuck them in the show notes but uh enough crapping on for me folks please enjoy this great chat with the one and only dave slow so i don't know if you remember this guy but someone wanted to say hello it was um tom from campsy back in the day uh, Tom uh, Kotsonis, 
I think. He said um, he used to be really fat back in the day. He's not fat anymore. Oh, He's in Melbourne. Him. Yeah. Metalhead. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head when he used to be fat in the day. <laughs> you that narrowed it down, didn't it? <laughs> How you going, Tom? <laughs> he said he wanted, to, he wanted me to ask you about, um, apparently, and you can tell me if it's not true, but apparently you used to put curses on people on the train. Back in the day? Well, I used to say all this shit, yeah. <laughs> how, did that, how did that happen? I just said it. <laughs> it never happened. <laughs> Would you just point at someone and just go, I'm going to put a... No, I just said I used to do that. Oh, yeah, it's, okay. it's, just, it's just easy to say these things. <laughs> one of the... One of the um, one of the myths that you put out there into the world, um, these reputations that uh, that are created around, around your persona. Yeah, it's all bullshit. Yeah? Yeah. Because I reckon a lot of people... You know, if your name pops up over the years, and depending on who you talk to, everyone's got an opinion of you. I've got an opinion of Mate, you. Mate, I've had people come up to me when I w- w- used to wear a sad X shirt, and they go, oh, I know Dave Slave. I go, yeah. <laughs> Good on you, dickhead. <laughs> I'm fucking not going to say it's me. You know, like... like but just let it yeah, just yeah, keep, you have, keep a, you have a haircut, and they don't fucking know it's you. Because <laughs> I cut off that fucking long hair. The long hair, yeah. yeah. About but, 92 or so, 94. But I mean, when I met you, I'd moved to Sydney just about 15 years ago. And I mean, you were just always the guy at the metal gigs, you know, talking about uh, the projects you're working on. You were trying to get me to do bass lessons. You are talking about... No, so, that was... Um, I thought you asked me that. Oh, I can't remember. We I asked everyone. Well, I was, pretty, I was pretty drunk as well back in the day as well. So I can't no, I was remember. asking you to give me bass lessons. Oh, before. yeah, right. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Everyone's got something to... <laughs> I still learn of people that are half as good as me that on the internet, you know. <laughs> but I'm not I, saying you are. I'm just saying. Yeah, you, yeah. Well, I mean, I just remember. You play all right. Seen uh, the band a lot of times. Yeah. Oh well, I go okay, but I see you, you do the job. That's uh, I, I get the job done. And you do a good job. Well, thank you, sir. That's what the that, best bass players are. The ones that do all fancy tricks like me are just show offs. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of the stuff's just useless, really. But it's impressive. I mean, you know, some of the videos that you've done over the years are. Are pretty pretty out there. I mean, the yeah, stuff know, that most people the, can't play. Well, it's not like I'm any more gifted than anyone else. Someone actually said to me recently, they "Go, oh, you're really gifted." I go, "Really? Wish I fucking knew that. I wouldn't have to practice for fucking forty years, would I?" <laughs> <laughs> it's not a gift. It's fucking just hours work, and hours. Mate. Yeah, of, yeah, well, hours and hours. What do you? I think I've got a creative brain. That helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I always think outside the box. You know. Yeah, not traditional. Not well. Well, I've never been the kind of person. I hear a song of a band and oh, I'm going to work out that song. I'll just think, oh, I want to steal a few of those techniques that they're using and mix it in with my own. Yeah. I've never been authentic. Yeah. Everyone I play blues, it's not authentic. A blues player would laugh at it and say it's not authentic, but I don't want to be authentic. Same with classical guitar. T- some bloke showed yeah. me some classical bits. We swapped a few ideas once and I showed him some bass lines. And, yeah. And, and um, I just took the technique. I didn't want to take the music. I mean, many people go, oh, that doesn't, that's not traditional classical classical guitar and i go well good that means it's my fucking music it's how you own it because if something's traditional it's not yours <laughs> what were you what were you playing when you first what did you first pick up bass guitar first or guitar had, or what did you well have? when i was about six um one of my oldest oldest cousins used to play old beatles records they were already old then yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, like, and i thought oh wow and then i saw them on tv with the girls screaming i wanted to be in a band from that point <laughs> you know, i end up in a band with these yobos yelling at us but we won't go into that <laughs> but anyway um I've got the rubbish bins outside because my dad goes, you're not bringing drums into the house. And I had the rubbish bins upside down. <laughs> I had a few old saucepan lids, a broom handle, and we fucking put the... Yeah, right, yeah. St- yeah. Made symbols out of that. And back then, the rubbish bins were like this willow brand plastic. Yeah. And they had a really good thump to them, you know, so I got yeah. a couple of them, you know. I had a row of milk bottles with different water levels. I thought I had a bit of percussion in there. <laughs> <laughs> we were so poor. I mean, I had to use fucking wooden coat hangers for drumsticks. But eventually, <laughs> my brother bought some real drumsticks and I started. So drums was the first first thing that you wanted yeah, to try? without a drum kit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then hand drums. I had bongos. Yeah. Even then, I had to take them in the backyard. <laughs> were you listening to, like, stuff that would traditionally have bongos in the music? Or no, was it just, just attracted. I, just, think, just I like think drums it. and vocals are a natural thing. Yeah. Tribes done them, you know, that you, you can do them without instruments. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can do them without... With the melody or whatever. Instruments you pay money for. You yeah, yeah, yeah. hit things. And you can just, just whack stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I've always done that. And... And I worked out a lot of rudiments just well, on hands. Yeah. Real, and probably hands without, on a table. And probably without the theory at the time either. You just, just learned how... I don't, to... I don't... I'm not into written theory, but I'm into scale theory. But with, drum, yeah. with drums and timing, that's just natural for me. Natural? Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how long were you doing sort of percussion, percussion stuff before you decided to pick up a guitar and 
or play other when instruments. When I was 14, I got a guitar. Yeah. Someone up the road had this, uh, well, I thought it was a Les Paul, but it was a copy, but it was, <laughs> it was fun. 60 bucks, so I took it. It looked cool. Yeah. 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 I didn't know the difference. <laughs> yeah. I thought, oh, that's like one of those real expensive guitars that Jimmy Page has got. <laughs> But with a cheaper brand on it. Was it Led Zeppelin and stuff like that that, you, that got you into Actually, wanting to play guitar? I was more into ACDC. Yeah, right, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, and people think I'm a metalhead, but I'm false metal. I'm actually more a hard rocker. I like, I like early Australian rock. That's probably my favourite music at the moment. All, yeah. the, all the stuff what? from 78 to 84. Yeah, right, okay. Like so, Ice House in Excess, fucking Dragon, yeah? Uh, well, yeah. Yeah, New Zealand band. Yeah. Um, oh, we, 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 we kind of adopted them a little bit. Yeah, the Angels. Yeah. I thought they the were Angels? fucking fantastic. Yeah. I've yeah. seen them live and they played with Crunch, you know. Yeah. I mean, they really rocked the house, you know. There's a different... Um, I'm, I'm a massive Aussie rock fan. I think there's just something about the energy, especially in that era. I love it. Just there's something. I love it more now than I liked it then. Yeah. Because back then I was meant to be heavy metal, and you're not meant to say you like these things. But when I hear all the shit they put out today, all, all the fake pop that comes out today, all the artificial stuff, all that stuff was good. We had back then. Yeah. All all the pop music in the seventies was. It was written legit. By, written and played by musicians. Real musicians. That's <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't just, you know, Kanye West wouldn't survive in the seventies. <laughs> He'd have nothing to tune his voice with. <laughs> <laughs> like, there was nothing to keep him in time with. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you had. You had limited tools. You didn't have a lot of technology to, to cover cover things up. You just you just had to learn your craft. You had to learn your instrument. Look, I've used electronics in yeah. my Moon Alien music, incorporated with my um, guitar riffs and bass yeah, yeah. lines and that. But the samples I use, the samples I made, or they're not they're sound samples. They're not people's fucking songs. <laughs> you know, yeah. I mean, I don't take an artist's sample and loop it and think that's talented. That's now like getting yeah. a famous painters fucking painting and chopping up little pieces and sticking them all in a different order and saying look at my artwork <laughs> <laughs> fuck off not not original is it i mean no. yeah you gotta you gotta create something from nothing no matter what you use well there's some people out there they're just natural you know yeah. What I mean? yeah i mean you've always sort of been like that i mean i think everything man i go i go through some of your stuff that you put out over the years and it's the most original out there like and and don't take this the wrong way, but the word I, that comes at my head is crazy. It is well, some crazy stuff. It's I don't want it to be fucking not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's boring. <laughs> Mind you, I do like stuff, music that's not crazy, but I mean. But, the, but it's different to what you listen to and what you enjoy versus what you create. Like, it's, it's, it's two different things, isn't it? Sort of. But it, like all that Moon Alien music, for example, that's just... Um, that's from growing up in a shop full of pinball machines. My parents had a little mini penny parlor and we used to play pinballs all day. And that really the fucking, that incorporated with the guitar riffs and that is what that is. It's just- Just all that electronic music from the pinball machines and just the, yeah, the, yeah. the, the noises of no, the No, they never really made, a lot of the early ones just had bells. Really. Oh, the bells. And, and the old auto yeah. mechanical ones. Ah, yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So that, so a lot of that stuff is sort of the inspiration behind. Yeah, and, and early behind. Space Invaders, like just all that stuff I was so obsessed with as a kid. What about the lyrics? Just nonsense. Just nonsense? Well, fictional. It's yeah. Moon Alien Digital yeah. Fiction. It's just fictional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not claiming it's real. <laughs> Was there any sort of... Well, Planet Zoid might be real. Well, I don't know. Come up with that song, uh, 91. You, um... I mean, there's so many planets that are without names, you can fuck call them whatever you fucking want. Just pick one. Yeah. There you go. They don't yeah. have to be baptised. <laughs> It's just fucking planets. <laughs> you've well, you've named at least one of them, so you can claim that one for your own. But were you, are you a big sci-fi fan growing up? Or I, know, you know? I never. When I watched these things, I didn't care about the storylines; just the theme. Yeah. And old horror movies, I don't care about the fucking what's going on. It's just the theme and the vibe. Bit of the ambience or whatever. It's, it's like, like the monsters or Adam's family. Yeah. You watch that, and it's just it's just the atmosphere, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's just a vibe. So I, but I did like uh, the Adams family. They had very quirky stuff. Did you? Has any of that sort of fed into your music? Yeah, reckon. you reckon? Yeah, yeah. theme wise, yeah. Yeah. Because a lot of the doomed and disgusting, there's a lot of tongue, say, yeah. tongue in cheek in that. Yeah. People hear it and it sounds really dark because I use demonic scales that would have got, you know, witches burnt a couple hundred years ago. You yeah, know? yeah. And I've made them more demonic by modifying them a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but like at the end of the day, um, you've got to have tongue in cheek. Yeah, real real things that are sort of horror like have to have a bit of tongue in cheek. That's why Rob Zombie's movies are a bit more got a bit more vibe to them than it's a little bit paranormal of a stupidity or something. You know? There's a little bit of a comic element to it. It's it's not it's not obvious in your face. No, but, but real it's horror a... has comedy. Yeah, so yeah. It's sinisterism, for example. Yeah, yeah. Like Vincent Price, he was a bit yeah, tongue in cheek. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's 
Has that always been a thing for you? Like any any music you've written over the years, everything's just had to have a everything bit of that in the, deep down is just a fun and games for me. Yeah, yeah. So is, so what do you like if you're listening to other people's music? Who like I know that some of you and some of your mates from back in the day had connections with some of the guys in Norway and the Norwegian scene, and you know those guys at least on the surface, you know, a very sort of extreme sort of presence that they put out there. What? Yeah, they used to get shirts and stuff off me, and I signed a. <laughs> I think it's yeah, your honest got a shirt off me, and I, I didn't even know who he was. <laughs> but then I had to sign a flyer for him, and my mate Bill Rainbird posted it off to him because he was in connection with him. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah and I said, make sure he gives me money for the fucking shirt. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> so I'm not paying for the postage, but <laughs> I mean, some, some of those guys. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I've never met a lot of those guys before, but. At least it came across as very serious in their craft and what they did. Yeah, I'm not into that. No, how do you how do you look at that stuff? I think you look more more. It looks more horrific when you're on stage and you just let yourself go and have that tongue in cheek and you have the people are more convinced when you're not bunging it on. Yeah, but we are bunging it on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but when we just look like we're not bunging. It on. Is it is it just a case we like you just don't. Uh, it's not the right way of describing it, but you just don't care as much. Like you just sort of lose your inhibitions. And well, so you look at a lot of them people with that uh, white makeup paint on their face, yeah, yeah. and their facial expressions aren't matching. They just look like, oh, I don't want to be here. Oh, oh hurry up! <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just, it's like you gotta. If you don't have the facial expression to start with, don't add makeup to it. Yeah, yeah. Mind yeah. you, with Kiss, it sort of suited them. They had rough heads. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. when they they had good songs, but Gene Simmons, as soon as he took that makeup off, I thought, oh, I might just put it back on. I'm surprised, <laughs> I'm surprised they lasted as long as they did without the makeup. I mean, they. Well, you know, I, I, I think it, they were really dynamite band when they started. Like, they yeah. were really, yeah, they had some good riffs and that. Yeah. But that, they come up with something fucking new. Yeah. And then when the glam thing got bigger in the glam metal thing, yeah, which yeah. I, mean, I like some of that shit too. Yeah. yeah. They, they, they thought they'd follow that path. It's like, why are you following a path? When you already had something totally already, original. I was going to say, you created And their makeup fucking yeah. was out there, man. It was, yeah. fucking, it was theatrical makeup, you know. That's right. It wasn't glamour makeup. It was yeah. theatrical makeup. And it was very unique and original, you know. All the all the life stuff that you've done over the years, has that always been a, a thing for you to make it theatrical, make it sort of yeah. an entertaining Yeah, but it's all thing? random too. Yeah. Like, you know, Rock turns up with a bag of lawn clippings. I turn up with a tin of Pell and eat it on stage. Yeah, but you know, I want to know something. It wasn't real Pell at all. I just changed the label, but I didn't tell Rock because I wanted him to look as shocked uh. when I produced it. It's me and Sloth knew what it was. And I was yeah, it, was, it was old El Paso refried curry bean. Yeah, good veggie tucker. Anyway, I fucking spooned it out the Sloth and he's eating it. And I mean, and then the audience is eating it off the spoon. I felt like a priest walking along with fucking giving handing out bits of bread, you know, the old wafer, you know. I guess, I and I thought, well, well, I knew what it was. Sloth knew what it was, but they didn't fucking knew what it was, and they were fucking eating it. So I guess it's for the reaction, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it a reaction. A, and and, and yeah. uh, Rock tipped uh, a bag of rubbish that he got out of a solo bin on his head. But that, you know, like, I don't even know he's going to do that. It's all <laughs> random. It's all piss taken. Was it, was it a, lot, a lot of pro we've done a lot of pr pr pranks on people over the years. But yeah. we, I used to do them on Rock as well. And, yeah. And, was, and we had people coming over for parties, and it'd just be like Rock and go on the ground convulsing. Ah, it's just all just a bit of fun. Yeah, you it's know? all yeah, it's all bullshit. <laughs> Is, we were just we we're just idiots, but with a bit more character than most idiots, you know. Well, I think I mean that's the big thing I see missing with a lot of bands is that a lot of bands get on stage and they play, and you know they might be really good at their. You got to look like you want to be there. Yeah, that's it. And you, you know what? With if 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 um, I rather hit the odd wrong note because I'm jumping around like a clown than worry staring at my fucking instrument and being too precise and. That's not entertainment. Do that in a studio. You know? No. If I, I mean, if I go to a show and I want to see a band on stage performing, I want to see that craziness. I want to see that sort of yeah. cha chaos on stage. Well, well, once again, Kiss had that hysteria. Yeah, okay? yeah. Um, Van Halen had that. Yeah. <laughs> Eddie, oh, mate, Eddie, RIP, mate. Anyway, he yeah. was another big was influence. Shock, was that a shock to you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that was one of my big inspirations. Yeah, yeah. Seeing him do all those hammer-ons. I, I can do them. Yeah. But I mean, he just done them his way and no one can do them like okay, him. You can't no replicate can that, like can you? You can't. You can't you, that's, he's a signature player. Yeah. What I call a signature player is somebody that does something and you can't copy it. You exactly. can't. It's, it's like, it's like he's Ozzy Osbourne. something. People can say, oh, Dio's a better singer technically. Well, Ozzy Osbourne's harder to copy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because he's a character. Yeah. Yeah. He can sing well and he's a character. He's got both, you know. You'd be like that though. If someone tried to play your stuff like to you they wouldn't be able to do you well I, there's a lot of people i can't play 
because I've just, yeah. I, I, I'm, like I said, I don't sit down working out people's music. So if someone's going to play Stairway to Heaven, well, they're going to do it better than me because I've never sat down and thought about playing it. Yeah, but yeah. you're just not interested in... I'm not interested in yeah. playing other people's things because I've got too much shit in my brain that, that I haven't done yet. Yeah. Do you I, have... I'll pick up the guitar and I'll just make up stuff random. Yeah. It just happens. It's, it's not, I don't think, oh, I've got to come up with something. It just happens. Is that is that something that happens every day or is it just sort of the inspiration can come at any time just it's it's a random sort of thing no just ran, just yeah. pick up the, but don't forget i've gone over all the scales a million times gone over the harmonic minors gone over the fucking um uh, uh, diminished scales i've gone over every fucking scale in the book i've made my own scales yeah but uh, they're all chromatic based but they still got pattern yeah, yeah threads yeah. through them yeah you do all the hard work you memorize it but i, I, I teach people use a lot of muscle memory training so their yep. fingers re remember it if their brain forgets it yep right you do all that and then you then you then you got to let go and forget you've done all that and just play randomly and your new version of random is just going to be a lot better, lot better than your old version of random when you knew nothing <laughs> you know, like because yeah yeah you you've memorized all this stuff and it becomes second nature doesn't it yep. like you, you don't have to think well, about when it when a mozzie flies by your fucking ear you fucking clip it don't you and you don't think about <laughs> it hey you know fucking <laughs> rack off <laughs> i've never i mean no, it's a reaction you've got to build up yeah, your reaction yeah. speed and train your reactions yeah. It's sort of related to reaction speed, except the mozzie buzzing around the ear, you weren't expecting that. Did yeah. did you ever get lessons from anyone else, like back in the day? No, when you not get, really. No, you just all self-taught? I had this bloke that used to come around my mum's shop pinball parlour slash, and he played some blues rock, yeah. and he showed me a couple of scales and that, but it wasn't like anything that I, that took me anywhere, really. It was just, yeah, cool. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. yeah. But that's a bit that's been about it like you, you've just been sort of self-taught you just you just worked it out as you go i'm on. a bad learner but a good teacher if you can yeah. like, relate to that if someone yeah. tried to teach me something i'm not that good yes yeah. add really yeah but when it comes to my brain's too busy trying to think of something else yeah 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 i've got yeah. a few few conversations going on at once in my brain at times <laughs> So it makes it easy if you're teaching because you've got a little i guess a little bit more control you know where you're going next I'm so just you can sort of, yeah just like natural. i've been told i'm good at it and i uh, and, and i can I shape lessons as I go along. If somebody comes along, I'll get their lesson plan on a bit of paper and then um, I'll, they'll do something. I'll go, hang on, that can be fixed. Yeah. Like you can they, see. It might be their pinky's not balanced with their second finger. I'll go, we're going to do some finger balancing techniques. Like that closed peg over there. See that? Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> not to hang up fucking me socks or anything. That's, a, <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's for training the pinky. I think, I that's think why that's it's a pink clothes peg. <laughs> I think that was one of the first things that you uh, told me when we first met. And you were telling me about the peg, your peg. Uh, oh, I use rat yeah. traps too. Rat traps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they loosen up your fingers. Well, for any. <laughs> <laughs> you well, just go snap. <laughs> and they're all flexible after that. <laughs> well, for anyone that's listening that doesn't doesn't understand the concept, what, like explain it a little bit more. Like why why would somebody <laughs> use a rat trap to, to get better with their technique? Anything that's got resistance. Yeah. 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 So well, you know, you see people that go to the gym, they use weights to get big and bulky. Yeah, yeah. Well, if you use elastics. Okay. And then and, and, and there's, there's four dimensions to push and pull training, like with um, anything. Any yeah, anything, body, yeah. Right? Yeah. So, like, if I squeeze that peg in, yeah. I'm resisting to that peg trying yeah. to open my fingers up. Yeah. Then when I get the elastic band and put it around the same two fingers, and I pull that, I'm resisting to that, right? Trying to, Going yeah, the other way. trying to pull yeah. my fingers in. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to have both and then you get that flexibility. And so with the rat trap, it's and, and because it's because because springs and rubber bands, you yeah. get flexibility. Whereas if they were weights, you'd get strong, but you wouldn't have that flexibility. Do you still do that yourself? Yep. Yeah. Is yeah, that no, yeah, yep. regular? Like regularly you do? Yeah, well, yeah. the peg's over there, isn't it? Well, I guess, I guess so. I mean, it literally is. There's a peg there. I had a hand grip, <laughs> but one of the things broke off. Like yeah. One of those guitar things oh, with yeah, the yeah. four things. Yep. Yeah, but it's still good for someone's got three fingers. They can yep. send it off to them. <laughs> <laughs> Any three-fingered mates out there? <laughs> Let well, Django break. Reinhardt style. <laughs> <laughs> Another fucking great fucking gypsy guitarist. I love all that old shit. Yeah. Now. Yeah. When I see people playing back then, I was just looking and I go, geez, this stuff was fucking fantastic. Just a different appreciation for it now? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Have you found that your tastes have changed over the years? Like, I mean, you said before, like the Aussie rock I always stuff. Go back, I always go back to stuff that, that, I, that I heard when I was younger that yeah. I didn't really like as much, and I like it more now because it's more reminiscent or something, you know? A bit nostalgic? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do some things like... It brings memories back because uh, I've got uh, this mega memory of my childhood being in kindergarten you know i remember if I, I can close my eyes and name everyone in the class and yeah probably because i had an evil nun that used to hit me every fucking day with a stick oh really yeah. like yeah. that <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty sinister back then the nun was the nun was a teacher that was quite that was part of the school curriculum for catholic schools back then 
just um, punishment by force or just oh, discipline. Oh, terrified of her. Yeah. The funny thing is with this weird ESP shit that goes on, back in 1988, I was at a house with Rock and I was telling him about her. And then on the ABC, her head appeared on the fucking TV not long after. And that's fucking her. What was she on the TV for? Because she used to coach rugby. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. She that's was a weird. real tough one. You said, I mean, you said that we were talking earlier about you with this sort of ESP thing. What, I mean, you gave, oh, me, yeah. gave me a couple of examples of it, but I mean, what, what other things are sort of picked up over the years where it's just been, like for anybody else who like just wouldn't be able to do it, but for you, you're able to sort of... Oh, it's, it's too far. I wouldn't even know where to start. Yeah. It's just normal. It's just normal for you. Yeah. 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 Like when I found my mate's wallet in the ocean, uh, 1983 at Metal Crusade Fest, 84 actually, like he wasn't even at the gig yet and I was, it was a cold day and I was over the... Coogee Beach towards the rocks and I was drunk and I was already in the water uh, long story but I was up to gut height mm. and the wallet floats to me and I go oh no not another wallet because I used to find these things all the time now I've got to hand another wallet in you know and I go and look at it and it was my mate's wallet <laughs> he lived in Croydon and he was on his way to the gig so he's lost it in town somehow and just ended up in the and I, he ended up being at the queue like an hour later I go he just got off the bus. I go, mate, where's your wallet? He goes, ah, he's already pissed. He goes, oh, I lost me wallet. I go, here it is. He goes, where'd you get it? Why is it wet? And I go, man, I'm not going into it. It's just, it's just, you know how my brain works. It's just this weird shit. Just, just, yeah. just happened. Just, well, when yeah. I'd done that Moon Alien TV commercial, I was just at an <laughs> internet net cafe and, and there was a newspaper there upside down and it had um, my brain somehow attracted to it because I see things that are related somehow, you know, and it said, crazy you're oh, crazy and i turn it upside down it says uh, actor wanted for commercial and i, I ring up and they go what are you doing i go oh, i play drums on my face because i used to play drums on my body and face really fast yeah and they go okay we'll come and audition you they go what's it for they go we can't tell you it's, it's for a food company that's it and then anyway they come over this unit here yeah audition me and um i played drums really fast on my chest and face it was like bruce lee but a, a drum <laughs> version yeah, yeah and they go, they go yeah um they go, can you do it again but you've got to tame it down we don't want kids beating each other beating themselves up <laughs> <laughs> punching themselves in the head right <laughs> okay no worries and then um they feel me give me a couple green you know and then um turns out it was for the real mccoy chip company yeah. which i actually worked for and got fired from oh, making really? chips oh. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, pretty that's... coincidental considering i haven't had that many jobs you know like it's that weird link isn't it yeah, yeah just... no but that's just that's just one of millions that yeah. kind of shit happens all the time another time i'm walking in town I was drunk one night, and now don't forget, in, in the history of photography, there's millions of photos, trillions. It goes into trillions of photos out there. Yeah. And there's these uh, young people in King's Cross taking photos, Woodney Williams Street, and, they go, yeah. and, I, and I go, where are you taking photos? And I jumped in front of the camera, pretend I was putting my finger up my nose, sort yeah. of like that, with my knuckle, you know. <laughs> yeah. And they go, oh, cool. And then it ended up on the Livid Fest fucking poster. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Right. And then uh, just could have been anyone. They didn't even know it was me. It's not like they put it there because it's me. No. It's and just... then, then the rock was at the place where they're printing the T-shirts. They go, we have to hold it. There's some random person there. And that poster they had, that was 2004 or something. They had, um, 2003, they had... Uh, like Jimi hendrix they had jesus uh put like a portrait yeah, you know, yeah painting thing. Yeah, yeah it's just a collage of faces and dick smith so i ran and and, and people from all over the world and yeah. i ended up just having to be there and not because it's dave slave it's because they don't know who it is just random and then rock is in his place and he goes rock goes that's dave slave <laughs> They go, really? They go, really mind? They go, no, go ahead with it. And they started producing all the materials, printing it. <laughs> like, and I end up on the fucking beer coaster holders and everything. And it's just like random. It's just like another time I've I done a doom and disgusting poster where I've got me, ah, Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the rubber dog bone. It was a neighbor's yeah, toy dog, but yeah. it looks real. Yeah, I yeah. put it in the, the tomato sauce. I put it in the poster <laughs> and, I've, and I went to Hurstville and I go, oh, can I just put one of these up? No, no, just leave them on the tape bench with all the dance club fucking leaflets. Yeah, so okay, go, okay yeah. well, that's a bummer. You know, yeah. about f maybe f not even a week later, like five days later, there was a documentary on records in S New South Wales, yeah. record shops, yeah. and, and will they survive? Blah, 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 blah. And then, um, I just come here, this exact chair here, I sit down, I put on the TV, sit down, and that poster came up on the TV. And I went, no fucking way. And Sean, remember Sean and Zanja? Sean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, fuck, yeah. was Prawn Man. Yeah. He's the one who designed that post, uh, made the flyer for me. Yeah, right, okay. He goes, oh, did you see it? It just came up on the TV. I go, how come you and me, the only one had seen it, we were involved? He goes, that's bullshit. They, when they went in the record shop, they happened to put the camera right on that bench. Where right, that, well. It was only a little fucking tiny flyer, really. It was like, you were just a, like a, 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 what is it? A uh, like an A six? No, uh, no, tiny. Yeah, A five. A five. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
So you're just lucky that you put it. No, in but the I spot. sit down here and, I, and, I come, and I'm on the TV covering the whole screen. Going, ah, and and I thought, how the fuck did that get there? <laughs> and I just thought, no, this is getting too fucking weird, mate. You know, like it really is. It's just <laughs> like it was just that split second. Yeah. Just and, I, and I, yeah, and I sit down and it comes on. Oh no, no, no. And, and and Sean goes, yeah, I saw it. He goes, and I go, you saw it too. Well, no one else fucking saw it. So if he didn't see it, then you probably would have. Just thought no, you no, saw no, look, even if it happened, yeah. and I didn't see, well, that's a bit weird. But when when it happens and you see it, like they could yeah. have put that camera in fucking anything, anything on the fucking shop in any shop anywhere in fucking Australia or anywhere. It could have been another show. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's the, it didn't have to be that. It's it could have been, isn't it? yeah, it could have been the Wiggles or something else on TV. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah, that's just normal for me. Things, but, but that's not normal, you know. Like, I mean, normal for you, but for anybody else out there, everyone just like jaw drops. Like, just the things that you've. You well, found back, yourself in over the back years. Back in the days, every, a lot of people out there know this. I used to find money everywhere. Yeah, Rock will tell you. Yeah. First time I met Rock, we're walking up the street. And he goes, oh, I don't know about this money finding thing. You sure about this? I go, yeah, look, Rock, there's $15 on the ground. And he goes, what the fuck? Just as I said it. And it always happens as they say it. You know? <laughs> I pick it up. Yeah. And then and a few years later, he goes, we're walking the other way through Campsie. And he yeah. goes, remember that time when we want to mention them? And I go, yeah, Rock, there's another 10 at that same letterbox. <laughs> and he goes, no. And he bashed his head in the letterbox. He goes, that's just too ridiculous. <laughs> it's just too. <laughs> It looks like it's been edited, uh, you know, structured. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Like it was all planned like it was planned. Mm. Yeah. Have you ever you ever thought about why you've got sort of this sense or this whatever it is? Like, I mean, you say say ESP, but like like six cents, yeah, yeah. like one cent more than five. <laughs> <laughs> Not even quite two bob. <laughs> Have you ever thought about why why you've like where it's come from or? Just why you have it? I mean, it's a bit of a weird yeah, well, question. Of course, you yeah, wonder when the weird yeah. things happen. You fucking always. Well, I'll show you the the demon in the hallway later. I just put a bag up randomly. Like it's an artistic thing too. Yeah. Like when I film my Moon Alien video. Yeah. Yeah. I get this space scan and I point it to the wall to make a galaxy sort of reflection. Oh yeah. Yeah. And 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 an a another alien's head appeared that I didn't plan to put there. And it's like how the fuck? We didn't notice it till we edit. A prawn man helped me edit that. He's yeah. going, look, there's a fucking another alien head now. I go, oh god, it's really convincing. Guys, people are going to think you've done it on purpose. I go, yeah, but it, it just f blends in with the theme. Wow. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Another time we edited um, a video and it was in black and white, grayscale, yep. for Doomed and Disgusting. And Prawn went to look at the colour code thing. Oh, like uh, the... It's like a readout, it's sort of like... Like the, um, like the negatives or... No, not negatives, it'd be like... Yeah, it was like a set of group of numbers. Oh, okay, right. And it had DD666666s. Six, 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 with DD, Doom Disgusting. Did it? <laughs> yeah, just like, he goes, how the fuck that happened? I go, I don't know. <laughs> but it was, wasn't, 666 is just not evil enough anymore. It had six of them. And in the video, there was 666s that I put there on purpose. So yeah. it just blended in with a the thing. Sort of inspired the next. Yeah, yeah, it just yeah. goes into it. Yeah. No, yeah. no, I already had it in the video. That's what oh, I'm saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so it's something. But then it's because it's in black and white, things are more likely to line up. Yeah, okay. It's a, wow. I don't know what, it, uh, what you call it. Some kind of spectrum color yeah. spectrum um, yeah yeah and chop those bits out yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's i mean it's it's fascinating because i mean i just I, I look at my life and i've i mean i've done some exciting things over the years but just i think when i yeah, every time i bump into you and you've got a story to tell and i just i'm always just like wow like you know what a life you've lived and it's just like so far it's just incredible like just all the things that you've done and just random places that you've ended up and just these weird yeah poor and famous mate yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'd rather be fucking rich and fucking not famous <laughs> rich yeah. and unknown well you're rich in stories i'll tell you what i mean yeah. just there's, there's always been i mean what was the i mean you probably told this story a million times so sorry if i if i'm bringing it up again but the hey hey stuff from years ago i mean that's just yeah crap. but yeah but like not not to go into detail about it but just the randomness of that happening was that just a case of just like a similar thing to the tv ad where you just saw something and go oh fuck it i'll just no that was a bit more like i'm gonna do that you, you had a bit more intention behind yeah. it yeah yeah you made a decision that you yeah, wanted yeah. to do that yeah 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 because yeah. i thought red faces you meant to make an idiot of yourself <laughs> i made a bigger idiot in the audition again now you got to tame it down once again yeah. <laughs> everything was just for a laugh back then did you ever i mean i i get the vibe from you that like you've just never worried about so the consequence of something like what people would think of you you just like if you oh, felt these like days something, I, these days I, you would but you worry a then. little bit more but back then you just yeah, didn't care back then everything no everyone had a every, there was no pc bullshit yeah. you know what i mean everyone took yeah. a joke 
you know? But you didn't care if, like, if people looked at you in a particular way. It was just like, whatever, you just wanted to express yourself and just have fun. And well, my sister saw me on Hey, I said, she goes, oh, you're embarrassing yourself. And I go, I'll go, it's red faces. You're not meant to fucking go there and put on a fucking concerto, mate. You know, like, fuck, <laughs> it's fucking, it's called red faces, not fucking you know, Australian Idol. <laughs> fuck, that's the whole idea. Oh. But then the bass broke. Yeah, yeah. Because I smashed it. Yeah. I forgot about that bit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got excited at the camera and I thought, geez, if I knew I was going to do this, I wouldn't have brought that fucking mocking good BC Rich. I would have brought the cheap fucking Hondo. <laughs> you were just channeling the energy in the moment and just. just no, fuck because it. the bass amp actually. Uh, I know, and I had an engine arm too. I had fucking stuff in my. But the bass amp was farting, was making a horrible noise, yeah, and I yeah. got the shits, and I just threw the bass in the air. <laughs> and then I, and I, I moved out of the way and I came back down, you know, with a cracked neck. How many people saw that, like, that you knew? Did people just, when yeah, they saw it, just, yeah. like, everyone was going, oh, Dave. Yeah, it was on the yeah. commercial for Hey, yeah. Hey, Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it, I was a bit, I, I must admit, I, it was hyper as I was, I was still a bit in st- camera fright when yeah. it happened. Yeah. yeah. I got a bit shy. Yeah, yeah. Do you think that it, do you think that stuff like that helped, helped with everything else that you were doing at the no, time as far really. as, no, 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 it didn't no. help? What I'm doing now is more interesting, mate. You know? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't even dwell on the past that much. Well, I should ask you this question. I'll only just touch on it quickly. But when we started chatting a while ago and we were talking about doing this, and one of the things you said straight up, says, I don't want to talk about sadistic ex- execution yeah. at all. I don't want to talk about sadex. And and I guess just for the benefit of everybody else, just say no. I mean, what would be what's the what's the big reason why you don't want to just sort of, over it? Yeah, yeah, just done it. You know, yeah, just it's just in the past. It's not yeah, yeah, it's like I mean, I might enjoy it again in another forty years or something. Yeah. just over it. I yeah. can't listen to it. You know, exhausting. It just, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just happened. You know, yeah. it's, it's like you get over it. It's yeah, sort of like you know. People have girlfriends and they get over them, or vice versa. No, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, get over it. It's, you know, it's, just, a, it's a great way of just, looking at just, it. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's happened. I'd enjoy it more if people got over it too. You know, <laughs> like well, I was going to say, do you still get hassled a fair bit about it? Just not, not much now. No, people say I'm doing other things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, what are you doing now? I mean, you, you're doomed you're, and disgusting. Well, I've seen a lot of that. Yeah, and that, that's uh, once again non-genre. It's yeah. just whatever it wants to be. Yeah, I've got leftover songs from Sadistic. Yeah which I never used. I'm going to use them one day, but they won't be under splits, that name. They won't be under that name. Yeah, but you were doing splits that were sort of doomed, but it was also some sad stuff. Yeah, that's stuff because that was... the record company wouldn't do it. Otherwise. Ah, yeah. right. See, so mm, a bit yeah, of negotiation. Yeah, but as soon as I get hold of them, I just promote the site. I'm, yeah. Yeah, the site I mean, of... I wrote all the music anyway, but I'm just over it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes it hard. Because it's too much, it got locked too much into genre or they're a death metal band they're a black metal band it's like no we're just fucking mental but for fucking don't fucking put us in a pigeonhole because you've got no (laughs) well weren't you calling the doom stuff for a while there dead metal yeah yeah yeah, and everyone steals the name as soon as you use something everyone else jumps on it yeah um I saw, a, I saw a picture you put up the other day on, on the Facebook page, and I think it was something for, um, oh, I'm going to get it wrong, you'll tell me, something about Halloween. Um, hell. Raise hell on Halloween. Raise, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I do a lot of Photoshop designs. Yeah, yeah. And it's just, are they, is that off the, is that influenced by something you're working on musically, or is it just sort of no, no, an no, idea no, comes no, in I make head? it look like it means something big, but it's not. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> I was going to... Lie, live, and you read the fine detail at the crematorium, but it's, <laughs> it happened in 2000. <laughs> you know, like, whatever, you know? It's just, you've got you to get people's attention. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it's real or not. Yeah. Just, I mean, it doesn't have to be fully real. It's just, yeah. No. What, are you, what are you doing for music now as far as new stuff? Are you, are you sort of, I mean, you're obviously well, always working on stuff. Maybe I might make stuff. some nice music instead of doom and disgust. I might make flowers and butterflies. I've been thinking about that. Oh, yeah? You feeling inspired? Yeah. Yeah? Not dead flowers and dead butterflies. But maybe Live living ones? ones, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm thinking about doing an instrumental album, like instrumental. Yeah. And um, you've got just basically, like raw, like, yeah. Yeah, raw, like more flamenco meets... Nothing's authentic, man, but I'm really shit at being authentic. Just my take, my take on everything. You know? yeah, my, yeah. my version of flamenco makes my version of metal, you know, my everything version mixed of in. blues and yeah. just no vocals, just all music. Yeah, yeah. Have you have you recorded stuff already or is it just well, sort of in your head? the Bionic Bass CD. Yeah. yeah. That's 20 years old now. Oh, well. Yeah, but I've got to do a new one. Yeah, yeah. But that wasn't just bass. I played drums and everything on that. But That's right, yeah. The bass was the main thing main, yeah the focus wasn't yeah and yeah, when i hear it now i sort of cringe because then i can do it a lot better but that's I, like, I, I hear little fimbles in my playing and people just don't hear it but i mean like to me because you, you know you're your own worst critic you know that's it well, that think, note could have been a bit louder than the other note <laughs> <laughs> but no one even you ask people if you, if you said to someone can you 
can you hear anything wrong with that? They can't hear it. But if you point it out, they go, oh, yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's just... But I think it's like a lot of musicians where you've got to let things go. Like once you create something, you can only work on it for so long. Yeah, you've got, you, you got to cut the cord. Well, I'm not lying. The best lead breaks I've done on Doomed and Disgusting are the ones where I just say, yep, just let it rip, Boris. You know, just yeah. fucking just play. Don't plan. I didn't want to plan them because yeah. I want that to be the real feel you on the spot. You just want to channel it. No, that's got to be on the spot for you. Yeah. Okay. The, the riffs are already planned. The drums. And I leave room for all the other things. You know, but, but I mean, at the end of the day, there's the arrangements there. But this guitar solo, I just want to play it on the spot. I've done all the years and years and years of fucking training. Yeah. If I can't come up with something on the spot, then I must be bloody useless. <laughs> and they always sound better. Well, you playing get, a melody line, but they ain't playing all of it. You, know. you get the best energy on that first take, don't you? I mean, it's just it's. Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. It's a primal sort of. Yeah, I remember saying yeah. after five takes, I can. <laughs> Can I, I want to try to do that first take again. Well, a bit late, but especially back in the old days when everything was real to real. Yeah, 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 yeah. You just don't. Back back in the old days, people didn't fuck around. Like, if they done, they went to the studio damn well knowing there's only so many times you can rewind that tape without risking a. Yeah. You know. What was the first time that you went into like a studio to record? What was that for? I can't remember. I think just doing weird sound effects in a mate's four on a four track. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Just yeah. trying to experiment with yeah, yeah. with that, see how it all works. Yeah, and then yeah. I'd come up with these Moon Alien ideas from that. Yeah, because that was all done on a four track. Then we added um, like Pro Tools to it, so it's blended. Wow, I even played drums on my face for those recordings too. <laughs> but they don't sound like drums. You put a bit of flanger on them and a bit of reverb, they start to sound like electronic drums. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go back and listen to that now. Yeah. We'll be listening out for your for the mouth drums. Oh, you won't hear them. <laughs> How, how do you think um, people have reacted to to the music that you put out over the years? Because I mean, it's it's out there. It's different. It's, it's out there, but it's not enough. There's not enough people um, listening to it. Yeah. Like people go, why don't you do new stuff? I go, because not enough people have heard my old stuff. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, yeah. Might as well just keep on fucking getting a bigger audience and then do new stuff. So you've got a bigger audience waiting. Do you think? Do you think that if you put some new stuff out, that might bring attention to the old stuff as well? It will, but I might have to do it overseas or something because. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Unfortunately, um, I've got more people overseas following me than people here. Where, but well, there's more people overseas. But yeah, of course. Is it Europe that sort of? Europe, yeah. and America. Yeah. yeah. Is there anywhere in particular? Like, obviously, sort of your early days, sort of. Well, I don't know if that... I want to go to Europe because it's too fucking cold. <laughs> Just fucking freeze. <laughs> I can't handle fucking Melbourne weather. <laughs> I don't want to fucking handle Europe weather. You need to go over there for six months during I'm a summer. I'm summer person. And then, yeah, yeah just do yeah, the summer. Yeah, but summer over there is like fucking shit day like here today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's summer for them, you know. They're in bikinis when it's snowing, mate. They're fuck. Yeah. It's just too cold. Just don't like it. Do you, do you stay in contact with a lot of sort of yeah. musicians and stuff yeah, in yeah, Europe yeah, from yeah, back yeah. in the day? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Any of those, any of those? No, no, not back in the day, just people from now. People from now, yeah, yeah. I never really knew people from Mayhem or anything, you know. No. I never really knew much of their songs till recently. <laughs> yeah, right. I just never got into black metal at the point time. I liked Bathory and all the, uh, the stuff even before that. Yeah. But I didn't, it's not because it was black metal, it's just stuff like that music. Was it one of you guys that was like pen pals with Cawthorn or whatever back in the day? Yeah. Yeah. Rock and sort of me. Yeah. 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 What was that like? Can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like you send them a, you're not like you send them a message or message no, and they get like, back to you. No, it's not <laughs> you had to travel had to travel for three months before they get back to you, and then three months back the other way. Was... Were you just were you trading tapes or anything, or was it just? Uh, oh, I can't remember. I can't remember. Just a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just um. Yeah, yeah. Rock, rock gave him a tape. Yeah, right. Yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Me. But he seemed like a good bloke. He was very creative. That guy. I, I, well, I, he was a multi instrumentalist, wasn't he? I mean, he well, well, did most of the stuff himself. No, that's the thing, yeah. But but it was, he was original. Mm. If anyone sounds like it, it's because they copied him. It's yeah. like he was original. He was a pioneer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, big time. He, he was fair dinkum, you know. Yeah, I am. Um, I think I think he's one of those guys where just his, whatever he felt, he just played. And he didn't. His voice didn't sound like seagull, and he didn't dress up like a panda either. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, he just he really didn't care because I mean his albums were so different over the over the years. I mean, he went from this sort of black metal to this. Yeah, it was always decent. But it was always decent. Yeah, it was great. It was great. Yeah, it was always it was, decent. It was, it was just raw. Actually, authentic. I think I did get influenced off Bathory in, the, in some of the slower riff departments that yeah. I use now. Yeah. Doom disgusting. But I mainly got influenced off Black Sabbath. Yeah. I liked, I liked his um, sort of the more sort of epic, sort of repetitive riff 
sort of stuff, the sort of more longer tracks that he did, the sort of a bit more, a bit more hypnotic. Sort yeah, of yeah, stuff yeah. Stuff yeah, that... along where you could sort of just zone out a bit and go. Oh, well, I remember having his first cassette, or one of his first cassettes, and it was "Raise the Dead" and another. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, but I remember thinking that was cool because it was atmospheric and he had the right reverb. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, you don't have reverb, you haven't got black metal. You know what I mean? Like, really, it's like you haven't got distortion, you haven't got heavy metal. That's right, yeah, yeah. Mandatory. I, I write a lot of my stuff on acoustic guitars, but because then you know it's heavy. Because people heavy. always say, think uh, that distortion makes your guitar heavier. I go, no, playing heavy is first priority. I saw I saw some videos the other week where there's a guy on YouTube and he was playing uh, death riffs on acoustic guitar. Good. And fucking hell, wow. They sound like it's, it's exactly oh, yeah. what you're saying. Like, they're heavy riffs. They sound heavy. If you, you can make need... it sound heavy on an acoustic guitar, it means you're playing heavy. Yeah. yeah. There's a difference between... There's a lot of things they call death metal today, and they're not even hitting hard. It's just like... It's, there's no elbow grease in it. It's just... No, all, it's just... It's just a little it's all finger. rat-a-tat-tat, and fairy fingers on the bass. Yeah. You know, it's just... Nah. You've got no. to hit hard, a bit harder. I mean, I like I like soft playing. Yeah. I like jazz bass. I like soft stuff. Soft playing. But I mean, if, you get, if you're trying to play heavy, play fucking heavy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're not, don't play heavy. Have you, have I mean, you, ACDC, they didn't hit soft or it wouldn't no, be no fucking way. energetic, mate. No That's where they got the character you, from, wasn't it? I oh, mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I heard their new song, It's Okay. It's okay. It's better than what I was expecting. It's better than what I was expecting too, but I mean, I just feel sorry for them. It's like, oh, mate. No, I don't think I don't even know if it's money for them anymore. It's just, no. I mean, surely, like, I think it's just that Angus wouldn't have a clue what to fucking do. I think they just need to, just to do something, be occupied. Yeah, yeah. Then he's got enough money for another 50 lives, you know what I mean? Like, easy. 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 Yeah. Loaded. They've got so much money. Oh, it's incredible. Oh, you know, I went to the same school and he and Malcolm went to, but like 13 years later or something. Ashfield? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Well. And apparently they were real troublemakers because a couple of the teachers were left from then when I was there. Oh, so uh, they remembered them. They remembered them, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I remember some cheeky bastards writing in the textbook, Ankus and Malcolm Young, and they'd, they'd be getting around today thinking they're real. Because <laughs> you had the thing in the, the, the inside of the yeah, oh, who, book where you write who, 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 who yeah. owned it. Yeah, and I, and we were, I think not me, but people I knew were writing their names in them, I'm sure. Because <laughs> that's right, I had a whole row of names. Yeah. As it got passed on. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Every time you borrowed it from the library, you put your name in there. No, or... the textbooks that you kept. Oh, the textbooks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I remember Angus yeah. Young was in one. I thought, nah, it was probably this <laughs> prick he wrote it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But I mean, you're right. I mean, teachers were saying, but they were, they were, they were, they were yeah. 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 Angus was a larrikin. Well, fits Which his, is good. It's, yeah. it's his persona, doesn't exactly. it? Exactly. That, that schoolboy troublemaker. Yeah. 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 Uh, schoolboy that went to, happened to go to my school. Oh, yeah. I went and to his had, school. He ended up making a lot of money being a schoolboy. A lot of money. Apparently one of the teachers said, you're going to get nowhere in life. I know which prick of a teacher it was too anyway. You're going to get nowhere in life. Yeah. Well, I think I know what teacher it was. And um, he went to a formal, not long after, I think it was like after even TNT or something, and the, yeah, he right. got his hands shaken and apologised to <laughs> <laughs> by the teacher. I was wrong. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he taught the teacher a lesson. <laughs> Do you um do you listen to much new stuff these days? I guess I've been listening to old Oz Rock, yeah, just Pink old Floyd. Stuff. I love Pink just Floyd. the old stuff. Yeah, just, just reconnecting. I love music with feeling, man. Yeah, yeah. I don't care if it's a fast feeling, a slow feeling, an aggressive feeling. Yeah. As long as it sounds like it's coming from the heart. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff seems to even a lot of uh, like in this day and age, it seems like in the metal world you got these pigeonholes. It's mm. like, well, this is death metal or whatever you want to call it, and, all, and they all sound like same or too much the same like yeah. the same cookie monsters just a bit too much and they've all got skill in that but i mean it's just a little bit too much the same and then you get the black metal and there's all these seagulls and it's all decent music but it's just a bit there i mean their music it's not is, unique it's not as unique it's as well it's not it? quite yeah but it's how, how can you be unique when there's millions of them yeah you know and then you get all this power uh power metal and, yeah, and same. Yeah. all these amazing guitar solos and they just don't sound like they're going anywhere once once it's not iron maiden you know that's it well yeah. i mean there's so many bands that sound like iron maiden now you know it's the same sort of thing but no one can, look, no one can then do again do. i sound like a lot of things so maybe i'm worse <laughs> you know what i mean but i sound like a lot of things at once but not well one. i think well i think that's the difference like you've got lots of different things and you mash them together yeah no, and instead I, of just and trying I, and to modify, get one path. I modify things too yeah and that maybe that's what people need to do is that they instead of just trying to emulate one hero they've got a look from every single direction they possibly can and mash them all together to make something unique. Or just think on your, for your do, do that for when you're practicing. Yeah, but whatever. naturally, yeah. Yeah, but try and come yeah. up with stuff without yeah. saying, I want to sound like that song. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to sort of have it calculated. No, no, otherwise, no, no. Yeah. I don't want to sound like a, 
I love Slayer, but I don't want to sound like them. I mean, I've probably got influence riffs. I mean, riffs that sort of sound like Slayer here and there. But I mean, so be it. It's yeah. not like I set out to say I want to sound like them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just. But just I mean, happens. that's a good influence. I mean, fuck. Yeah. yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. If you got that. I remember that when Slayer first came out, a lot of the older metal metalheads uh, were saying, "Oh, those guitar solos are out of tune." I go, "Mate, they're not. The the riffs aren't in a scale, and they match it perfectly. Okay, <laughs> it's their own formula. That's it. That's what made them unique. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were a blend of what? Probably they, a bit they, of they venom didn't go and... by the book. Put it that way. No, they were definitely no fucking way. unique. Yeah. They just had a mix mash of everything. If they'd done though. diatonic scales, they're just going to sound like Iron Maiden or something. They, 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 were, they had to take things further. Yeah. yeah. No, and and the scales they're using is just, the riffs are just chromatic, but that's yeah. fine. That's what suits it. I mean, it wouldn't be Slayer without it. What, what, uh, what show did you see? What Slayer show? What was the first one that became? I saw them late. When was that? I don't know, the Horton Pavilion. I reckon it's about 15 years ago now. Oh, really? It was the first time after yeah. all those years. Yeah, I think it might have been, that might have been one of the first times I saw them as well. I missed them in the 90s. Oh, no. Did you see them in the 90s? I saw them at the fucking entertainment center, I'm sure. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I was really pissed. <laughs> and it was a lot, it wasn't planned, I didn't plan to go there, I just ended up there. Just ended up there. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. 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 They did play at the entertainment center, didn't they? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people out there going to be saying, "Listen, this fucking did." Yeah. Uh, yeah, of course they did. <laughs> were there um, were there any sort of metal shows that you saw back in the day, sort of growing up, like you know, that just sort of were like Iron Twisted Sister? Yeah. Oh yeah. Was that groundbreaking? Oh yeah. Why? What? Just their show, the theatrics? Oh or? yeah, yeah, everything, the whole package, the energy, yeah. and the drummer done a drum solo, and I thought, "Fuck me, dead." He's like out there, man. <laughs> he was really out there. He was above the standard of the rest of the band, yeah. as in musically. Yeah, but yeah. But it's those riffs that make it, you know. And and these this energy, it was amazing. Where they play? Was that Horton? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that just left a big uh, just scar. That, I mean, that was just unreal. Yeah. And was that? And obviously, I just said like it's a bit of everything, but no doubt the theatrics of of that band. I mean, they were they they came to put on a show. They were entertainers. Oh yeah. So that that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. No, they they fucking they had it. They definitely um. One in a million band, yeah. One of those signature bands. Was there any other bands? Yeah, I saw Motorhead. Yeah, was that just a... No, that was fantastic. Yeah. It was a Salinas, but my ears were buzzing for fucking days because it was a small venue too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, relative to... To, to the Horden, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. I remember seeing Lemmy with the bass hitting. He hit hard. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, he was... Um, I mean, obviously their, their reputation was to turn everything up loud. I, I, must, I must admit, when I first started playing bass, I was influenced off... Steve Harris and Geezer Butler, right? Yeah. And okay. Geedy Lee. Yeah. Not many metal bass players, but those three sort of rock. Very sort of hard metal. rock. And, and, and of course, ACDC because the, the, the pounding bass. But I wasn't using a pick at first on bass. Yeah, okay. And I used to say, oh, picks are for wimps. <laughs> they were for wimps till I, till I started using one. <laughs> but when I saw Lemmy playing bass in Motorhead, I thought, no, he's really got power. You know? Yeah. It's power. It's... There's yeah. not a million tricky notes in there, but it's power and it's really controlled and it's fucking really hard to do properly. Well, I think he probably convinced a lot of people that playing playing with the picks, good. It's a, it's a good option depending on your music. Like, it, well, it the reality I've tune. come to terms with is um, playing four four is always better with a pick, just straight bang 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 bang. Like, like yeah. rock, hard rock, like yep. ACDC, you just do it with a pick. It's just got to lock in. It's just yeah, because it's just got that consistency. Yeah. Yeah, you need that boom, boom, boom. Whereas if you're playing like Iron Maiden, it's more bouncy. Yeah, there's more triplets. Or Geezer Butler, it's more loose ends here. And there. That, that's perfect that's right. for finger. It goes up and down. It sort yeah. of flows. They do both. There's no better way of It just depends bass. on the song, doesn't it? Yeah, it depends yeah. on what you're doing. There you go. So that's why I've incorporated techniques where I'm, I used to have a pick stuck to my finger <laughs> for sadistic gigs. Oh, and, nice, use, yeah. and, and use a finger picking for certain things. And then when it got to the straight, fast bits, yeah, I, yeah. I didn't want any more hours, so I just went straight to the pick that was stuck to my <laughs> finger. Then, then I eventually invented new techniques where you just use your fucking finger, one finger as a pick. I'll show you in a second. Oh, okay, sort of. No, you, you actually drive from this knuckle. Ah, uh, right, okay, yeah. It no, doesn't I'm, go as fast as a pick, but it goes fucking fast. Almost like a pinch. You're pinching in a way. Oh, you're doing it. There you go. There you go. Oh. You've something to work with. There you go. Oh, no, right. but the trick is <laughs> I'm using that nail. Ah, oh, right, so you're using your no, um, the, the, index I can, I can do it like that without it, but it, if it rests on the thumb, the thumb's just there as a rest. 
Right. The thumb's not driving anything. It's it's the index finger. Yeah. Finger. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. There we go. Well, yeah. well, and the clothes peg helped using the clothes peg and, to train and the, the good fingers. And the old clothes peg. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't just hang up your clothes. Train your fingers. That's right. Or multi multi purpose. It's good. Yeah. I mean, who would have thought that uh, clothes pegs would bring so much value in your life? Yeah. There you go. Did anyone show you how to do stuff like that, or was it just you sort of working no. it out yourself? Uh, uh, the latest thing I did steal was uh, uh, Paco de Lucia. Uh, someone, one of his students was showing how to sand your fingers down on the guitar for playing flamenco finger picking. What, and, your nails? Yeah, with that piece of sandpaper over there. Yeah, right. So following... Now you put the, you roll the sandpaper over the string and you start plucking the string while the sandpaper's on it and it moulds it into shape perfectly <laughs> because if the strings are flexing. Right. Whereas if you just use an emery board, it's going to be more blunt. Yeah, yeah, okay. And the fingers mm. mould into shape. And then when you take it away, you're flying. I go, fuck, I'm surprised. I never thought of that. I think of fucking everything else. Unorthodox. Jeez. No, it works. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. balances them out. Then you start playing with you. Because a lot of people have trouble doing finger-picking uh, finger guitar because they, yep. they don't realise the, the shape of their nails gets stuck in the strings. But if you shape them right, mm. you just they're like four separate picks. And they yeah, just, right. Okay. You know how a pick sort of has... Angled, angled edges, so yeah. angled sides. Yeah, well, you've got to sort of have a bit of that on one side of you. Right. Now, yeah. Oh, I'm going to have lots of things to think about. Um, with when you eventually put out new music, whenever down the track, I mean, the world's so different now. To, oh, I'm, to I'm, I'm, I'm doomed for success. I'm, I'm going to get, I'm making a, a soundtrack music. Like, Doomed and Disgusting will be a movie, I reckon. You're going to do a soundtrack like, and, and do a movie? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Because yeah. You, were, you were into acting, weren't you? You were, you were doing. Well, I don't call it acting because if you want to be convincing... You just be yourself. You don't act. Just Actors are acting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, they don't look convincing. When Paul Hogan done Crocodile Dundee, he was just Paul Hogan with a bit of a... A bit of... A little bit of exaggeration. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah right, it's an exaggeration. Of his character. Meaning of him. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's not like... Yeah. So have you got a... a well, he's one of my favourite... Uh, all-time uh, personalities, Paul Hogan. He's a, he's a legend. And Delvin Delaney. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching old episodes. It's fucking fantastic. Yeah, so. it's a different, different... Yeah. Anyway, what were we talking right. about before I no, changed you, the subject? You, no, go for I'm it. only meant to change the subject when you say things that I like. <laughs> you do whatever yeah. you need to yeah, do. Anyway, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, film. Yeah, now Have I'm you looking... actually got something written? Um, once again, it's a vibe. Oh, yeah, I've got something got written. Something. I don't want to say the name because every no, time no. I say a name, it gets fucking stolen. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I'll show you a guitar pick I invented and it got stolen. Yeah, yeah, hang on. Don't take a photo of it. No, I'm not taking a photo. Right. That's a prototype. I made a handful of them. And the flex is in and out. You squash it in. Yeah. What, what's, no, uh, what, you, have you got, what have you got in between? It's like a memory foam. Memory foam. Oh, so it pinches. So it's the same sort of yeah, concept yeah, as what you're... when you do, press it on the end here, it yeah. flares out and you, and it's, you get a six-finger uh, tape. Yeah, we won't go into that. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, no one can the see The second it, I so. made that, me made you find something online. Oh, look, Dave, they stole your idea. Fucking yeah. like, <laughs> <laughs> us. You can't do anything without someone stealing your ideas. With, um, with Not, a lot of the things, the ideas that you have, are they just in your head? Yeah. And you just keep them in there until it's yeah. ready to... Yeah, when I, when I made... Um, my moon alien videos i just look for shit around the house and made it spontaneously on the spot and people go what you i just had that toy alien head up there oh yeah 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 and i had um these are uh, flashy light bracelets and i never even really used a film camera before that sean prawn man left it yeah. over here and i just mucked around with it and then that became two videos <laughs> just things lying around the house just, just make just illusions make illusions you know you're just yeah. capturing little areas of a you know off a room yeah, and you can yeah, turn yeah. it into something else because people don't know what's behind it or around it, you know. So so with this movie idea, it's just a case of you got a you got a vibe, you got some some sort of feeling in, in, in you. Well I got the music for it. And it's all written? Or I mean it's all That's no, all yeah, it's all stuff that I've already done. Oh, okay. Yeah, it'll so just slot done? straight in. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Right. Yeah, yeah, you know, you've seen Walter Beasler, the evil priest character I've yes. made. Reverend Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's sorry, that's not that's Reverend Herman Hex. But Walter Beasley's going to be the funeral director. That's I won't go into it anymore. Okay, all right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. But bit of a shonky. You've, you've got an idea of where it's going to. Oh play. yeah, 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 yeah. And it's got to look rough. It's good. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. got to be as crook as Rookwood, mate. Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want it to be like that. Remember that stupid paranormal stupidity fucking thing that came out years ago. What the the movie? Oh, paranormal, paranormal. activity. I meant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. just dumb. It's yeah, like as yeah. if that's scary. No, a bit too polished, isn't it? Like it's just. No, but they tried to make it look like it's rough and, 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 and unproduced, but it but it, it it's, it's still forced. it's still it's still hygienic, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. 
And who's going to be scared of anything when you're in a cinema with heaps of people around you, for starters, you know? Like, nobody was. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you, that's the reality. Like uh, things, uh, old, uh, I mean, when I look at old horror movies now, I, I think, oh God, I was scared of that as a kid. Like The Exorcist looks silly, but I mean, it, for the day, it was perfect. Yeah, but it was raw. Yeah. Okay, so when I see those raw, I still use that raw. It wasn't raw; it was actually highly produced, but they made it look like it was just raw. Yeah. Now stuff. When you start using too much CGI in horror. If you can use it in a way where you, no one even knows it's there, like you just reproduce things that are natural, that yeah. could have happened anyway, fine. But when you've got people running up walls, well, nah, it just looks dumb. Yeah. It yeah, it's got to it's gotta, it's gotta relate to... It's got to be lifelike, isn't it? Yeah. It's got to almost convince you that And even in, in some of my Doom and Disgust, as well as my Moon Alley music, I've yeah. found ways how to fuck with sound. So, but you when you hear like especially the old days when you had speakers spread out yeah yeah where people think something's behind them oh yeah, yeah. by using polyphonic tones we were doing i was mucking around with them then yeah right and then a bit where the wolf is howling i was going to use a dog whistle so the people's dogs start howling too <laughs> but the, it didn't quite work but we experimented with that yeah. how do, do you have an idea like you know this is all stuff in in the works and so we won't go into detail but like do you think about how you how you would put these things out how you'd release them these days because it's not like it used to be it's, no. it's very different now no no do you have an idea of what you what you'd potentially do or who knows no nah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's weird isn't it like it's nah. just i know how to promote i'm good at that i know how to get yeah. people's attention but um getting a proper record deal is hard yeah there's just too many underground ones and they're, they're good off, they're just doing what they want but i mean they're, they're not going to make you famous no no. I mean, they, they help you a bit, but they're not going to... You can't just forever say, oh, there's this underground uh, uh, black metal band in Europe and they want to put out your record. I go, oh, again? You know, like, yeah. it's already happened. Like, it's got to move on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You've got you to make a few bob out of your talents eventually. You gotta, I spend money on myself, on this music. <laughs> you know, I'm not going to fucking keep on spending money on it. I want to make money. It'd be nice to make a little bit of money. I mean, no, no, it'd be nice to make a fucking shitload of money. <laughs> If you got a lot of money, like well, that old, oh, the old the old saying, oh, you should do it for the love of music. Uh, don't, no, don't worry about the money. Uh, nah, record don't. companies love that mentality. Oh, that's right. That's, <laughs> yeah. how, that's how they take advantage. Because if you're not making money and you get successful, they are okay. Right. Simple as that. Well, you gotta you gotta you gotta make money as well. So because you can't afford to do what you love doing with no money. Yeah, of course. And you can do a lot fucking more of what you love doing with more money. It's just the way it is, mate. <laughs> well, all right. So here's here's a quick game, a bit of a hypothetical. If you if money wasn't an issue and you just had access to funds, what would you do? What what, what would be the first? I'd be as happy as a pig in shit. That <laughs> fucking start. <laughs> so, I'll be shouting you a beer. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, what would you what like obviously you've got all I don't know I'd be too you, you know be, where to start well I, I just bought a lottery ticket for six million dollars Saturday oh fingers and crossed I, and it didn't win no no, no, man, oh, no it was, oh, it's cool. yeah I went yeah. there to get a refund I mean <laughs> if, if you buy a fucking can opener and it doesn't work you get a refund <laughs> no but if I if that won I mean I like a, I wouldn't even be doing this interview with you <laughs> no that's right I'm too oh sorry mate I'm a bit busy <laughs> <laughs> gotta sort out my finances <laughs> Well, I don't know. I, I'd yeah. spend it on creative things. Yeah, of course. And yeah. I'd help. I'd help um, certain things. Yeah, yeah. Things, like, you, things that you're passionate about. Things that yeah. You like Animals about. Australia, animal things, uh, children's hospital, whatever you know. Yeah. Like, I um, mean, I was a leukemia patient. I told you when I was yeah, fifteen. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd, I'd help people out, but I help myself fucking first. <laughs> Family, hey. no, give them, give your mates a few bob. Well, yeah, mate, I'm doing well. Here, you know, go and get yourself a beer. <laughs> Yeah, my shout. <laughs> yeah, you can shout next time. <laughs> I always had the fantasy that if I came across a lot of money or won a lot, I'd never tell anybody. Like I just, and I just act like I normally act. Bullshit, just, you'd be bragging. Well, you wouldn't believe what happened. <laughs> what's in my head versus the reality is two different things, but I'd like to think that I could fly under the radar and no one would know. And I just like shout people things every once in a while and I'd pay for things, and but no one would know that I've just got, I've got money. And just, I love, I love the idea of just. Mate, if I, if I, if I had that shitload of money that we were talking about, um, I'd give the bum up the road, like you know, a couple of hundred bucks, and say, "Don't pester me for fucking five years." <laughs> <laughs> it's some, some shut up money. Stop asking for money all the fucking time. <laughs> all right, mate. Well, before we wrap it up, um, if wrap it up, I'm just you're just getting started. started. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I'll have to come back again, and I'll, no, no, I don't bring I'll bring some beers next time for you. But um, you don't have to bring thanks, beers. Thanks for your hospitality. But um, where where should people start? Obviously, you've given me a bunch of stuff. I'm going to chuck it online so people can. Oh, do you videos. want to do some giveaways? Oh, if you want, 
Do you do giveaways? Yeah, I'll do giveaways. Yeah. We'll get a photo of me holding it, but Yeah. So they know yeah, that you didn't just fucking bootleg it. Yeah, uh, but whatever. <laughs> hang on, hang on. <laughs> Hope my breath's not that fucking bad, uh, listeners. <laughs> Dave's getting up to find some, uh, find some goods. What were you calling it? It was like a dead Ouija or um, Ouija metal. I change it all the time, mate. <laughs> you you got to keep it fresh and exciting. You gotta keep people on their toes. Well, the funny thing is, um, I'll make something, and if it's got a bat on it, I'll, I'll, I'll attract all the gothic people with that. And if it's got um, a skull on it, I'll attract all the, you know, death metal people with that. It's, just, it's just for everyone. Man. If it's got a butterfly, and I'll attract them. Look. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. All right. Well, Dave's uh, Dave's come back with a bunch of CDs. Got some cards here. Some stickers. yeah. I'm gonna sign the fuckers. Nice. Well, guys, um, um, we've got these uh, business cards with Ouija boards. It's like a pocket Ouija board because, well, the contact side's a Ouija board. That's because I don't want anyone fucking contacting me. <laughs> you can contact someone else. <laughs> yeah, contact someone. Who's, <laughs> let's contact some dead shits, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, uh, uh, anyone, 2020 stickers to yeah, remind nice. us of the lovely year we've had this year. I think that's quite a fitting picture for this year. Well, I made them before all this shit happens. Oh, it, it worked out. <laughs> Well, if, uh, if anyone's keen, um, hit me up and I'm going to give some of these away, shoot them around the place. Anyone in the world who's listening, I don't care, I'll post them. And if you don't like them, simply throw them in the bin, no questions asked. <laughs> That's what I say to people who've bought them as well. <laughs> I'll go on the back. <laughs> this, you know, if you're not entirely happy with this product, simply throw it in the bin, no questions asked. <laughs> well, mate, uh, you're... <laughs> That CD there, and I'll, I'll take a photo That's of you holding it. That's from 2005. Them. I was going to say, I've seen that album cover around for years. Yeah, but I've just got them. you got a repressed Now, now that's a one. very controversial album cover. Like people, It's either really shit or it's like, wow, it's getting attention. <laughs> like if I just though. put a painting up like all the million other bands are doing, no one's going to say, oh, what's the fuck's that? You know, like, but that's not your that, style that's, more, anyway. that's not really meant to be like a piece of art. That's meant to be like, that's like the poster I've done for the chip company that yeah. was on billboards yeah oh yeah no i didn't see the picture the same pose is it oh i don't think i've seen the picture I've oh, seen okay. the video. it was all over town all yeah over right stops in there. yeah okay yeah. i mean that's your style that's you like if oh, I, yeah, as soon as you I, see it i, go, I yeah, didn't like Dave. this cover because all the reviews saying what a stupid cover and i'm thinking then when i got it back and i put it in the red cover i go nah that nah, looks cool <laughs> it gets attention yeah <laughs> well look at ozzy osbourne do you look like a true madman when you, when something's a bit wrong like that you know that's what i mean right. like diary for madman yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. But or or, or D. Snyder on Stay Hungry. Yeah, but it's, the yeah. ridiculous just makes them look more crazy. That's it. Okay, if, if, if it was too nice and tidy, then you'd think, oh, that's just another it, it can't be safe. It's got to be a bit dangerous. It's got to be a bit raw, I yeah. reckon. A bit raw. That's Definitely. the words. All right, mate. Well, I'm going to... Uh, people can contact me, and I'm going to shoot them out to people. Um, and I'll chuck some links in so people can check out... Hang on, stuff. I was going to play something on the guitar. Oh, Dave, okay. All right. Yeah, Dave's going to... Dave's going to... I'll, I'll hold the mic for you as well, so... All right. I can't find my fast pick. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I only got the slow pick. I'm going to let my bionic pick slow. That's a prototype. Prototype. Give the prototype yeah, a yeah, go. Yeah, the other one, the, or the better prototype, there's better prototypes. But I'll, I'll use one on YouTube, I think. That's All right. I'll hold it here. <laughs> 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 All right. I'll just warm it up here. There you go. Hey. <laughs> I think that's the first uh, rendition of anything I've had on the podcast, so. Love it. Love it. <laughs> the thumb in here too. Yeah. There you go, Dave. All right, Dave, we're going to wrap it up. Thanks for thanks for having me over. Yeah. And um, oh, you can rack off soon. Yeah, yeah, I'll rack off soon. Yeah. But um, we should do another catch up, and we'll we'll talk some talk some more talk, shit. Talk, I was going to say talk more fucking bullshit. I'm sure you've got a bunch of stories. Anyway, all right, Dave, you're going to sign some stuff. Say yeah, go yeah. say goodbye. Put yeah goodbye. Rack off. <laughs>
All right, go and reach out to Dave. Say hello. Go and check out Doomed and Disgusting over at youtube.com slash doomed and disgusting. He's also on Facebook as well. I'm just quickly trying to find the link here. It is facebook.com slash doomed and disgusting. Nice and easy. There you go. Nice work, Dave. Uh, and I'll have all the links in the show notes, of course, over at andysocial.net and andydowling.net. Um, everything we discussed, all of his projects, I'm going to put a bunch of links to uh, some YouTube videos, his uh, stuff from TV, uh, his side projects. He's got a whole bunch of weird and wonderful shit that he's done over the years. And uh, yeah, he's a lot of fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Definitely reach out to Dave, say hello, and uh, I'm sure he'd love to hear from you, as well as every guest who's been on the podcast over the past 251 episodes of the Andy Social Podcast. We've been going for five years, folks. It's been a lot of iconic people. If you're new to the podcast, you've only tuned in for the first time for Dave, go back and listen to some of the other uh, some of the other legends from the Australian metal scene. I've had uh, lots of great people on uh, over the years. Peter Hobbs was uh, was one of the one of the big ones that I've had where I've just one of those great chats. Uh, and you know, I've had uh, Tim from our band. I've had uh, Chris from Vanishing Point and uh, you know, Adam and Rod from Alchemist and a whole stack of people, uh, a whole stack of people. Uh, Dave from Allegiance. I'm missing tons and tons of people, but I've had a large chunk of the Australian metal scene on this podcast and there's still quite a few uh, dudes to go. So uh, dudes and dudettes, I should say. Uh, go and check all that out over at andysocial.net or just go back through your podcast players. Scroll back. Just just go backwards. Rewind. Go back and have a look. Have a, have a, have a gander. All right. Before we wrap it up, Patreon. If Patreon's your thing or if it's not, go and just check it out anyway. It's nice and easy. Patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. You can support from only a buck a month. Like it's dirt cheap. It's like you, you don't get anything. You just get a little feel-good payment because you're supporting the scene. You're supporting your mate Andy do his little podcast and uh, it just comes out of your PayPal account every month and it's just nice and easy. And if you want to support a little bit more, you'll get access to an exclusive Patreon podcast that comes out every Tuesday morning, 6 a.m. Sydney time into your ear holes. It's a bit of fun. Um, we've got Team Acronoplan ha happening over there. If you don't know what Team Acronoplan is, well, you're going to have to join Patreon or you can search Acronoplan on Google and have a guess what that's all about. But uh, go to Patreon and go and check it all out. It's a lot of fun. So patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. Uh, in particular, the money that comes from Patreon supports the hosting, the production, gear, editing, uh, hosting, just like all of this stuff that, that comes into running a podcast. And I've been doing it for the past five years. And the money that's being generated from Patreon takes a lot of fucking weight off my shoulders. It's uh, It's been huge. So a massive thank you to all the guys uh, and gals that have been supporting on Patreon, in particular, my social circle tier. These guys are significant contributors to the podcast. They invest in my podcast. Andrew from Perth, Mick G from Sydney, Ash from Daniloquin, Dan from Dapto, Rod from Ray Lee in North Carolina. We've also got Liam from Brisbane. We've got Chris from Sydney. We've also got Brendo from Leeton, Tim from Canberra, and James from Brisbane. We've also got Patrick from Canberra, who now supports with 20 bucks a month because he's a freaking legend. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks to everybody who's on my Patreon uh, community, my Patreon list. It's just been amazing to have you guys backing me, supporting me, supporting this podcast. And by all means, folks, if you're even just slightly intrigued with uh, supporting this podcast, go and fling me a bunk, buck a month, a bunk. I don't need a bunk. I've got a bed. But you can give me a buck, a buck a month over at patreon.com slash Andy Dowling. All right, that's it, folks. Another podcast in the bag. 252 is next week. And I've got another musician, a return guest, a return guest. Now, this guest hasn't been on the podcast since, well, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you exactly what the episode number was because I can't remember, but it was in the 80s. So go back through and have a look at all the episodes from 80 to 89. And uh, it'll be one of those guys. And one of those guys is back on the podcast again to have a bit of a chinwag with me. A lot of fun. So until next week, folks. Thanks so much. Keep spreading the word. Take care and ta-ta.